Thank you, George. And thank you, Andy and Patty Haynes, for assisting today and serving Holy Communion. And good morning, Mrs. John, Miss Johnny Hicks. How are you, beautiful? <laughs> Very good to see you on the front row. Such a pleasant sight. Today is World Communion Sunday. It began in 1936 in the Presbyterian Church, USA, on the first Sunday in October. Originally, I think, originally it was called Worldwide Communion Sunday. After a few years, the idea caught on with all the other denominations as they began to see World Communion Sunday as an opportunity for them, as distinct and different as they were, to move beyond their differences, whether they be historical, theological, or whatnot, and worship together. So today, here we are, 76 years later, on our own first Sunday in October 2012, and we celebrate with all Christians, regardless of background or particular perspectives or theologies, our oneness, our communion in Christ, and all of this comes as it did when it began in a world that is still longing for a word that will bring reconciliation, for an action that will bring peace. Now, the Middle English roots of the word communion, which we celebrate today, refer to having something in common. And that's what I would like for us to think about in preparation for sharing the bread and cup together. What it is essentially at heart, regardless of our own particular personalities, differences, theological perspectives, backgrounds, denominations, on and on and on, what are the things that bring us here? What brings us to table today, the very heart, the very essential of the Christian faith? To answer that question, I began with a very negative word, sin. What is it that we all share in common in whatever way you wish to interpret it? Sin. Our sin, our sins, we are all sinners. We are imperfect, that is, or we have a hole in our heart, or we search for something. We know that there is a weakness that we have, this defect, some corruption. There's a darkness there from which we need a remedy. Paul said, recognized it in this New Testament letter to Timothy when he said, I am a sinner. Actually, he said it even bolder than that. I am the sinner, chief. I am the chief of sinners. I am number one. In other words, he's keeping it personal in regards to himself and saying, I am, and keeping, refraining from judging and saying that you are. Long and short of it, we all fall short. The short of it is that we all struggle, and we all have infirmities, and we all have weaknesses, and we all fail from time to time, utterly, and sometimes drastically. And it seems to me that what brings us together in a non-judgmental way is that which enabled Paul to say, I'm not only a sinner in regards to me and my relationship with God, I am the sinner, I am the chief. And you know, I've often said in terms of communion, the idea or the symbolism behind the minister, the ministers taking communion first is because we are chief of sinners. Now, George and I haven't decided who's number one or number two yet, but I'm thinking that maybe I'm number one. If we thought like Paul, if we thought like him, I am, I am the sinner, it would keep us from those judgmental statements that begin with, you are comparing ourselves to others, someone like the Pharisee and the publican as they prayed together. And the Pharisee, in his audacity and his lack of knowledge of his own sinfulness, looked at the publican and thanked God not only for all the good things he did, but that he wasn't like this wee publican. Jesus' words, why do you look at the splinter in your brother's eye when you have a board in your own? When I come to a realization of my own sinfulness, my own need, my own lack, my own desire for God, my own necessity of having God's presence in my life. That is where I'm in a place 
of humility which makes for peace and reconciliation. Every one of us here share this word. It's had impact in all of our lives. Sin. Secondly, on this Worldwide Communion Sunday, what is it that binds us together, not just our sin? Mercy. Mercy. Pardon. The favor. The grace of God. Paul said, although I just admitted to you that I'm not only a sinner, but I'm chief of sinners. He says, quote, in verse 16, I received mercy. What we share here today at table is not only our limitations, but God's mercy, God's grace, God's gift. He says, I received this mercy. He did not say, I earned it. It does not hang on my wall as a diploma from school. This is a gift. This is something that was given to me by the grace of God like the woman at the well, or like like Zacchaeus in the tree. And for this reason, and this reason alone, because Paul has received mercy, he can give thanks and share that mercy with others. Of course, if you haven't received it, you can't share it. Mercy, that is, forgiveness and freedom and new life. Mercy. Love that covers a multitude of sins. And finally, in answer to the question, what is it that binds us together, essential, the very essentials that bring us together in a worldwide way to celebrate, to commemorate, to partake? It is our faith. Our faith. Our confidence that there is a God and that this God is not only our creator but our provider and our lover. It is specifically our faith in Christ that makes us Christian. The life he lived, the words he taught, the stories he told, the lives he healed, the demons he exercised, the sins he forgave, even his own murderers when he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. It is a specific faith that we share in this worldwide Christian community in this Christ of love and sacrifice. How shall we formulate it? How shall we put it together in dogma or in words? Please, for goodness sake, with as least amount of verbiage as possible, the better the sake for clarity and lack for confusion. And here Paul does it for us. Here is the saying. This is what binds us together. This is the pointed remark about Christ. It is sure and it is worthy of full acceptance. The heart of it, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Christ Jesus came into the world, he came into the world to save, to deliver, to forgive, to set free, not the saints, but the sinners. And Jesus even found himself having to make this clear early on in his ministry, following on the heels of criticism of him for spending too much time with sinners. Whereupon he said, those who are well, They don't need a physician. Those who are well, they don't need to go to the doctor. Those who are well do not need a physician, but those who are sick. And then he said, I came not to call the righteous, but the sinners. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Today, As with our brothers and sisters all across the world, I invite you to this table to share the bread and cup. Mercy, God's grace, and Christ Jesus, our host. Come ye sinners, poor and needy, would be the appropriate invitation. Come ye sinners, poor and needy, weak and wounded, which we all are, sick and sore. Jesus stands ready to save you, full of pity and love and power. Thus the invitation, come ye sinners, poor and needy.
I would like for us to take somewhat of a break here in preparation for our communion. Let me in turn in our hymnals to 334. And let this be our prayer and our plea. Let this be our anthem to this communion that binds us together, not only with our hunger, but with God's mercy in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hymn 334, Shall We Stand Together and Sing? Mm -hmm. 